Hello, and welcome to this World Nuclear Association interview. In this interview, we'll be discussing some of the issues that will be under discussion at the World Nuclear Association Strategic E Forum on Sustainable Finance, which will be held online on the 18th of March. For more information, please go to www.worldnuclearforum.com. But today, I'm joined by Julia Pike, CISOLC Director of Financing and Economic Regulation at EDF Energy. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Jonathan. I'd first like to ask, it's been announced earlier um, that EDF Energy has entered into discussion with the UK government on the financing scheme for size or C and the regulated asset base model. Where do things stand in those negotiations and what is the expected time frame? Well, that's quite right. In December, the Secretary of State announced that um, the government was going to start talking to Sizewell about the terms on which that project can go ahead and making sure it represents value for money to consumers, which is, of course, all of our overriding aim. And those discussions have started. And one of the first questions for the government to confirm is whether or not they want to pursue a regulated asset based model. So at the moment, we are working through what that looks like and we're waiting for confirmation that that's definitely the right way ahead for the consumer. Okay, so the forcing regulated asset based model with a cap on overruns is a change from the paradigm in nuclear financing and would allow an access to private equity and finance. What would that mean, in fact, to the cost of electricity for the consumer? Well, it's going to have a really positive impact on the cost for the consumer. Because if we think about the economics of Hinkley, it's because it allowed interest to roll up through the whole construction period. And when we think about our own credit card bills, and you think about rolling interest up for you know, the better part of 10 years, then that's going to be quite expensive at the other end. And the other issue that the National Audit Office suggested could have been looked at differently is that if you allocate all of the development risk to the developer, then the cost of developer capital is um, understandably going to reflect all of that risk and is rather higher. And so the National Audit Office recommended that the government look hard at the regulated asset based model, which, of course, is what in the UK is already used to pay for quite a few utilities. So national grid, water companies, airports, they all use a regulated asset based model. And that's thought likely to lower the cost to consumers because it shares risk and because it pays a yield in the construction period. And both of those two factors result in a much lower price to consumers. So the price would be lower, but what would you say to the UK citizen regarding the risk taken by the UK government and by UK taxpayers in capping the risk of overruns during construction for the investors and financers? Well, I'd say that um, the UK system needs nuclear, and that's something which the government has concluded. Nuclear is number three in the government's 10-point plan for um, means to address climate change. And if you look at what has been said recently in Parliament, the Secretary of State has said that the electricity system with the right amount of nuclear in, always, of course, assuming that the nuclear delivers a value for money price for consumers, will be cheaper for consumers. So instead of comparing generation strike prices, offshore wind to nuclear, it's important to look at the whole system cost because it's the whole system cost consumers pay. And adding nuclear brings down that cost. So then if we look at the specifics, of the RAMP model, you know, that is the way which an awful lot of um, utilities in the UK are delivered. And where they're not delivered through the RAMP model, they're quite often delivered by direct taxpayer funding. So if you think about direct taxpayer funding, then taxpayers, of course, bear all of the risk. If you think about the RAMP model, then the risk is shared between investors who remain heavily incentivized to keep the costs within the forecast budget and consumers. And the reason to do that is because it brings down the overall cost to consumers in a way which represents better value for money for them. Okay, so if RAB offers a, a good way forward for the UK, what if we look uh, more globally? We're, we're in the year of COP26, we're focusing on climate change and nuclear power, if it's gonna play a role in combating climate change, will we'll have to be operating around the world, not just in the UK, not just in the countries that already have nuclear energy needs to be in new countries. So would the RAB scheme duplicate uh, itself in other countries suitably? Could developing countries use the, the regulated asset-based scheme model and under what conditions? 
I think that is a really interesting question. I think that the whole question of which forms of nuclear are going to be best suited to developing countries in terms of size and the size of the grid in those countries is a question in itself. One of the reasons that we think the RAB can be used for Sizewell C in the UK is because it's a copy project. So consumers are not taking first of the kind risk. We are copying Hinkley. And if we look at the productivity improvements between units one and unit two, then we can see that Sizewell as a copy, effectively Hinkley unit three, will come with a much lower level of risk of cost overrun to consumers. So I think if you, if you take away the first of a kind question for developing countries, and then you look at could the RAV model be used for, for developing later models in the fleet, I think the answer is very possibly, depending on the sort of system that those countries have in place today for how their utilities are paid for. Julia Pike, thank you very much indeed for joining us. That's all for today, but to see other interviews and to find out how to register for free for the Strategic eForum, please go to www.worldnuclearforum.com. But for now, thank you and goodbye. <laughs>